Hello everyone. Today we're exploring one of the most essential components of Docker, Docker volumes. Understanding how to manage data within Docker containers is critical for any Docker user. And by the end of this video, you will not only understand Docker volumes, but also be able to implement them in your Docker projects. So let's dive in. What are Docker volumes? Docker volumes are directories that exist outside the normal file system of a container and they are designed specifically for managing persistent and shared data. They are also used to preserve data generated and used by Docker containers. What makes Docker volumes so vital is that their life cycle is independent from containers, meaning they do not get deleted when containers are stopped or removed. This is crucial for persistent data that you need across container restarts or for sharing data between multiple containers. So let's look at the various types of Docker volumes. First, we have the named volumes. These are managed by Docker directly and are stored in a part of the host file system which Docker controls. Named volumes are easy to back up and migrate, and they are also ideal for production use with databases. Next, we have the host bind mounts. These can be stored anywhere on the host system. They are often used for development purposes as they allow a developer to link the container directly to a specific project on the hosts. Finally, we have the anonymous volumes. Anonymous volumes are created and managed by Docker without a specific name. They are typically used for temporary or disposable data storage. Anonymous volumes were helpful before the addition of volume management in Docker 1.9. Prior to that, there was no option of naming a volume. With the release of Docker 1.9, volumes became discrete, manageable objects with their own life cycle. So you might wonder, Docker volumes, yeah, cool, but why are they important? The primary benefits of using Docker volumes include data persistence, which basically ensures critical data is not lost when containers are terminated or upgraded. Another benefit is data sharing, which basically facilitates the sharing of data between multiple containers. And this can be very crucial for microservices architectures. Data security and separation is another advantage of Docker volumes providing robust isolation, which helps in meeting security and compliance requirements. Now let's apply what we've just discussed with a hands-on demo using a simple MySQL database. We'll ensure our MySQL database uses a Docker volume to persist data, and we'll also explore using a bind mount for development purposes. So let's start by creating a named volume. And to do that, we run Docker volume create and the name of the volume. So let's name it DB data. This command creates a new Docker volume named DB data, which we will use to store our MySQL database files. Next, let's run our MySQL container with the volume we just created. We do that by executing Docker run hyphen D a name. Let's name it MySQL. And let's pass an environment variable to store the MySQL root password to so MySQL root password. Let's call it my secret PW for password. And then we do a dash V DB data slash var slash lib slash my SQL and a space and then the image my SQL latest. So what we're trying to do here is to launch a new MySQL container and mount our DB data volume at slash var slash lib slash MySQL directory, which is the default MySQL data directory inside the container. So let's run that and our image is being pulled. Our Docker container should be running in a second. So our Docker container is running successfully now. Now let's access the MySQL shell create a database and table and insert data in it. So we do that by running docker exec dash it mysql, which is our container name. And then to access the mysql shell, we run mysql and then the user, which is root and then the password prompts. 
and then we enter our password. So let's fetch the password from here, which is my secret PW. I've copied it and I've pasted it. So now we're in the MySQL shell. So let's create a database, create database, and let's call it test DB. So that's done. Next, let's connect to this database. And to do that, we run use the database name, which is test DB. And then next thing, let's create a table called sample. So we do create table sample, and then let's pass in some default settings. So the ID should be an integer. And let's also say the data should have a limit of 100 characters. So let's enter 100 and let's run that. Next, let's insert some data into our table. To do that, we'll run insert into the sample table and then ID data and then let's enter the values. So let's say the ID is one and the data is hello docker volumes. So let's run that. Now let's verify that our table contains the inserted data. So to do that, let's run a select all from a table name, which is sample. And as you can see, the data we entered is present in our table. So let's exit. So we run exit. Now let's stop and restart the container to test data persistence. And to do that, we run Docker container container stop my seeker so the container is stopped we can verify that by running docker ps and we can see that it doesn't exist right because it's stopped but if we run a docker ps dash a we can see that the container is exited right on my secure container now let's restart the container and to do that we run docker container start my seeker so our container is back it's up and running so let's confirm that by running a docker ps and we can see that our container has been up for eight seconds now that we've restarted our container let's run a select command to check if our data is still there and to do that we run docker exec it a container name which is mysql and we can just directly pass the mysql command here so mysql user which is root i think p for the password which will prompt us for the password and then i think e and now let's enter our mysql command so use the db name which is test db and let's select all from our table name which is sample let's run that and request for our password which is what we had earlier so it's my secret pw and as you can see even after stopping and restarting our container our data persists and this confirms that our volume is set up correctly. Now let's see how bind mounts work in Docker. To test this, we'll create a file directly from a Docker container onto our host machine. As mentioned earlier, bind mounts are particularly useful for when you need the container to interact with your host file system. So let's run docker run hyphen v and then a dollar sign pwd pwd just prints working directory and this is our working directory right docker series episode 6 on my machine and then the colon forward slash workspace should be workspace and then the image name so let's use alpine latest and let's enter our shell command on the new line so let's do sh hyphen c and let's say hello so let's echo that sorry so echo hello from docker and then let's redirect that into 
slash workspace slash hello dot txt and as you can see the workspace directory in the container is mapped to my current working directory so let's run that in this setup we use the hyphen v dollar sign pwd slash workspace to bind mount the current directory on the host to slash workspace in the container this means that anything the container does inside the slash workspace directory affects the current host directory, right? Which in my case is Docker series episode six. The container runs on the Alpine latest image, which is known for being lightweight and fast. And we've also covered the use of this image in a couple of videos within this Docker series. By executing echo hello from Docker, and redirecting it into the workspace hello.txt file we're telling the container to create a hello.txt file inside the mounted directory with hello from docker written into it so let's check the content of the newly created file to confirm that our bind mount is functioning as expected so our file is here and as you can see it contains hello from docker the docker bind mount allowed our container to write directly to our host file system so to a directory on my laptop and bind mounts can be a very powerful tool for file manipulation and data management between docker containers and hosts now let's talk about volume permissions specifically setting volumes to read only to ensure data is not accidentally altered. This is particularly useful when your containers only need to read data and not to write to it, which helps to maintain data integrity. So first, let's create a directory on our hosts with a test file that MySQL will attempt to read, but not write. So to do that, we run mkdir, which is make directory, and let's name it test D ir so it's created and as you can see here test directory is still empty so let's run echo hello let's say read only word and let's redirect that to a file in our test dir so let's name it test file dot txt so as we can see we now have text file dot txt with hello read only word Next, let's bind mount the test directory we just created into the container in read-only mode. And to do that, we run docker run hyphen D to run it in detached mode. Let's pass a name, let's name it MySQL test. Let's enter an environment variable, just like we did earlier. Let's start the MySQL root password, and let's call it our password. And then an hyphen V, just like we did earlier as well. PWD, which prints our working directory, slash DB data, which is the volume we created earlier, slash lib, slash my SQL, very similar to what we did earlier as well. Hyphen V. And then now we need to pass the path to our test DIR. So let's Control C this to stop this for a moment and let's do PWD because we want to use the relative path to the test DIR directory. So I'll go two step up. So I'll copy this command and continue from where we stopped. So next let's pass in the absolute path to the test DIR directory. So which is this slash test DIR and a colon and then the path inside the container. So let's give it opt test dir and the colon ro, which is read only mode, and then the image name. So MySQL latest. This command will run a detached MySQL container named MySQL hyphen test. It will set the root password, mount the current directory's DB data folder to the container's MySQL data directory, and also mount the test DIR directory as read only to the containers slash opt slash test DIR. So let's run that. So there seems to be some issue with the command. So let's try to fix that. Let's copy this again. I'm gonna see, copy that. And let's enter this as well. And let's give that another shot. So another error again, it says invalid mount path. So the problem here is the var lib MySQL should be slash var slash lib 
slash MySQL. So let's change that and add a forward slash and run that again. So now it's running successfully. So now let's log into the MySQL container and attempt to read from the file in the read only directory. So to do that, we run docker exec slash it and the container name, which is my SQL test. And let's enter the bash shell. So let's run a cat slash opt slash test dir and a test file.txt. So we can see it contains hello read only world. Let's now try to write to the file which should fail due to the read only setting. So to do that, let's run echo write test and let's write that into a slash opt slash test dir and into a text file. So test file.txt. And as you can see, we're unable to write into that file because the test dir directory can only be read but not written into. Moving on, let's explore some common Docker volume commands which are needed to interact with Docker volumes. First, to list Docker volumes, we run Docker volume ls. So let's exit from this shell and run Docker volume ls. This command lists all the volumes currently managed by Docker. It's a quick way to see what volumes you have available on your system. So as you can see, I have the DB data volume, which we created at the beginning of this demo. To create a Docker volume, we run Docker volume create and the volume name. So let's try it out. So Docker volume create new volume. And let's do a Docker volume LS again. And you can see that the new volume was successfully created. This command creates new volumes and Docker volumes are not tied to a specific container, which means you can use them across multiple containers for data persistence or sharing. We can also inspect a Docker volume by running Docker volume inspect and the volume name. So let's run Docker volume inspect and let's inspect the DB data volume. This command provides detailed information about the specified volume DB data. It includes the volumes, mount points, the driver used, and other metadata. This is particularly useful for understanding the configurations and storage location of your volumes. To remove a Docker volume, we run Docker volume RM and the volume name. So let's do Docker volume RM and let's remove the new volume, right? When a volume is no longer needed, you can remove it using this command. Be careful though, as this removes the volume and any data stored on it permanently, provided no containers are currently using it. To clean up when used volumes, we run Docker volume prune. So Docker volume prune. Yes. So total reclaim space zero bytes because we did not have any unused volume. The only volume we have left is the DB data volume, which is used by our MySQL database. This command helps in freeing up storage by removing orphaned volumes that may accumulate over time. Before we wrap up this video, let's talk about some best practices. When using Docker volumes, regularly back up important volumes to an external storage solution to prevent data loss. Also use named volumes for critical data. This simplifies volume management and also increases portability to a very large extent. Lastly, prune unused volumes. Make sure to clean unused volumes to free up space and to also maintain a clean environment. That wraps up our deep dive into Docker volumes. We've covered their importance, types, operations, and best practices. These fundamentals are crucial for anyone looking to harness Docker's power for managing persistent data effectively. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more updates. Don't hesitate to drop any questions or suggestions in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.